This is Joe with JoesAstrophoto.com. Today we're going to go over the build of the Bear Claw Observatory. This is part two of the Bear Claw Observatory video series. In the first part, I went over the concrete pier, how I built it, and how I built the, the base mount for the EQR6. Now we're going to go over the actual construction of the building itself, and from the floor to the roof. The floor is made out of three quarter inch plywood. It's sitting on top of a number of 4x4s. I'll show you the outside construction later. After the observatory was finished, I covered the floor with some uh, pre-core vinyl plank sheeting. For the rail system, I've got 4x4s on the top. The, the walls are 2x4 and the on-center is at least 24 inches, but in some walls um, they're less than that. It wasn't a standard 16 or 24 inch uh, on center stud. I, I went with the amount of studs that I could fit based on the size of the wall. So the structure is an 8 by 10 um, with the, the door being on the 10 foot side and the roof rolls off on the 8 foot side which made it a lot easier. I've got two small shed windows that I purchased at Lowe's and I just did the framing based on what you would normally frame for a house or, or a shed. Now onto the roof, um, again I differ quite a bit from any kind of plans that you'll find online. Um, I did make the gables pretty much the same spec as they had it, but um, I also changed up the way that all the bracing's done, and I've got a 7 8 inch for, uh, and I've got 7 8 inch construction sheathing for the roof, and of course uh, felt and shingles on top of that. The roof is supported by eight of these casters. Each one could hold about 800 pounds. There's four casters on each side, and on top of the four casters, I've got a two by 10. And that's what the roof is connected to, is the two by 10. The casters ride on an aluminum rail. I picked aluminum because I was afraid the steel would rust. The door is also just made out of 2x4s. I wanted to get a steel door or a better construction door. Unfortunately, I couldn't find anything that met my specific needs for height or even width. Um, so I just went ahead and built my own door. I purposely made it uh, tight, as tight as I could. As a matter of fact, um, after I built it, I went through with the sander because it still wasn't shutting and it still doesn't shut easily. But I did this on purpose because we get high winds, 60, 80 miles an hour sometimes. And I, I wanted to make sure that the blowing snow and blowing rain didn't make its way in. I've actually got some weather stripping that I was gonna put up, but at the moment the door is so tight that I'm afraid to put it up. So I could have done a little bit better job on it uh, squaring it up, but it's pretty close and so far it's been working fantastic and the wind will be blowing outside and if you're in here it doesn't affect you at all. There's very little dust in here as well actually so that makes it nice, especially with all the holes where the where the roof rolls out. So that's pretty much it. I made a somewhat of a K slash X design in the door for uh, stability, and then I just put my handle on the inside. I actually put it like this at an angle because I could lift up on the door and close the door. Um, 
and that way on the bottom it's it's secure. I have a handle in the, up on the roof and that's where I grab it to start opening it. The roof is pretty heavy, like I said earlier, it's about, it's just shy of 700 pounds. But in order to open the roof, you actually need to get a little bit of leverage and pull it. And then I get behind it and I push up and pull out. Once you get it moving, it's really easy to move. The same goes for closing it. As long as you're lifting up and pushing, it's pretty simple to close. The other thing, while well, I've got the camera at this angle, I could show you that um, I did put a vent, uh, one on each side of the gables, just for airflow. Uh, in the summertime, it could get pretty hot, which is also why I included the two windows. If I have to, I suppose I could um, put a fan or an air conditioner in the windows afterward if I wanted to. I don't have any shelves built yet. I don't have any interior walls built yet. I did get a, a cool comment from somebody about um, the, the little sound panels I have on the wall. Uh, they, were, they were laughing. They thought it was pretty funny, but they actually do work. Um, because I don't have anything really, I don't have a wall yet, uh, an internal wall yet. So they actually do work uh, to keep some of the sound down. The, they had recommended getting some moving blankets and I almost went and bought some, but I decided that it, it would be a good time to just go ahead and finish the interior because that's what I really want to do. Here's a view from the southeast side. It faces basically east and west. I wanted the roof to roll off due north, but it, it actually rolls off more um, northwest, which I guess is okay. I didn't want to make it um, seem diagonal to the house. I, I needed it to go the same way as the house for looks. The problem with the way that the roof rolls off now is that I'm only able to get to about 34 degrees on that side and that's where Orion and some of the other good targets set in the evening or in the morning. Here's a shot of the front which is also the south side. Again the whole structure sits on three quarter inch plywood with uh, on top of four by fours. The four by fours are sitting on concrete paver blocks. So there's no actual dirt touching any of the wood. Everything's pressure treated as well. And the, the four by fours on the ground and the three quarter inch plywood are rated to be touching the ground. I just think it'd last even longer if they were just on concrete. So that's why I decided to set them on concrete blocks. The roof is just regular shingles I got at Lowe's. I just wanted some shingles that matched the house, but they didn't need to be super expensive. It's not very difficult and not very hard to re-roof this small structure. I think I used four bundles total to do the entire structure. For the outside, I used T111 siding. I like that look better than using all of the 1x6s. Also 1x6s are very difficult to find right now, at least in my local area. Um, where you live it might be a completely different story and they might be easier to find than the T111. But the T111 was about $30 a sheet here and I only needed 5 sheets to do the entire structure. So it was kind of a no-brainer to go that route. So the roll-off rail system is actually connected to the walls and also to the other 4x4 inside. I took two 4x4x12 pressure treated boards and I cut them to length so that they both fit for a total of 21 feet from one side all the way to the other side. I found some sheets of rubber at Lowe's and I cut them around this to fit 
around here because what was happening was is the snow was act the wind was actually blowing snow through this little hole right here so this actually works great we got about a foot of snow uh three weeks ago four weeks ago and there wasn't any in the observatory at all the four by fours are connected with some brackets to the other four by fours that are inside they're all pressure treated as well and i went ahead and stained these here's a pretty good angle of the way i have the the rail system supported i've got three four by fours at a 45 degree angle um, supporting the rail and coming back down so that all the weight goes down onto the concrete block and this is just a basic um, deck block i was going to pour it into concrete but you need to have the ability to raise and lower the rails based on the way the ground moves uh, on freezes and thaws. What I really should have done was make some floor jacks and then set the 4x4s on the floor jacks. Unfortunately, I didn't have the time or materials needed to to build those correctly and to order them online was very costly due to shipping so instead i decided for now because i could always add them later but for now i went with some concrete blocks and i'll raise and lower it the hard way by lifting up the concrete block and adding dirt or lifting up the concrete block and removing dirt here's a shot of what the rails look like on top of the four by fours no matter what I did I couldn't find a perfectly straight four by four and even after I did they still bowed on me a little bit I don't think this is avoidable I don't not sure maybe if you're lucky enough to find some straight ones I sifted through literally hundreds at the lumber yard and couldn't find a straight pressure treated four by four and on top of that, they, a lot of them seem to twist anyway, even when you think you've got a straight one, if you don't use them right away. Even the ones that I have here installed were much straighter than they are now. I could already see how much they've bowed since I've put them up. So what I did to counteract this was, is I added a 2x4 on, on the side here so that I could keep the rail going straight. That was probably one of the hardest parts, was keeping uh, the metal rail straight on the board the whole 21 feet. from the house I ran a 14-2 which is good for 15 amps and I ran it from the main breaker in the house to a sub breaker out here I mounted the the little square D breaker on that on a little board and I put in two receptacles I also ran cable into the floor and brought it up over by the pier and I ran to another receptacle so that I could power all of my devices on the pier. Eventually I'm going to try and get the ethernet cable from this outlet over here and run it under the floor as well so that it's not strung across the floor. It's another side project I've got to work on so that's pretty much it for the overview of the construction of the Bear Claw Observatory. A uh, quick note as to why I named it Bear Claw is because the whole reason that I built the observatory was this summer while I was out in the driveway uh, with my tripod and, and my mount, um, a bear came by about 2.30 in the morning. He wanted the garbage can and it just happened to be behind me in the, in the mount. Luckily I had went into the house uh, it was about 2.30 in the morning and uh, I went into the 
house to get some water and I could hear a wild animal outside and I didn't even know it was a bear. And I came out and there was trash all over the, all over the driveway, but the tripod and mount hadn't been disturbed at all. Uh, I had my laptop up on a table outside and I was still imaging the whole time that the bear was outside feasting in the trash. So it wasn't until the next night when I went out again that I realized it was a bear. Uh, he was uh, yelling from across the road and he came down off of one of the buttes and he came into the front yard and luckily I had the garage door open so I ducked into the garage and I went to the house. I had to wake up my wife and ask her to keep an eye on the bear while I snuck back through the garage and disassembled all of my equipment because I didn't want the bear to knock it over. It was a scary feeling at the time, more so for my equipment than for me until you get out there and you see the bear that close to you and then you realize the hell with the equipment and I'm running the other direction. So as usual, if you liked the video, please give it a like and don't forget to subscribe and we'll see you in the next video.